So, welcome back. Can you give us some information about your organisation, MAHA, Make Australia Healthy Again? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to give you some positive information at this point. Um, we've got well over 33,000 um, class action co-joiners and um, we've widened the scope to Australia. Uh, initially it was Victoria. Um, we've focused on uh, very clearly on, on showing that there is uh, no emergency and on the science so that's that's very clear what our strategy is and we did a round of uh, crowdfunding because we've now got uh, professional uh, people in our team you know legal people and we were able to transfer seventy thousand dollars to the trust fund of our, um, our barrister and solicitor, a person called Swabe Niall, who's here in Sydney. And that was an amazing effort by, you know, these people, these amazing people out there. And congratulations to everyone. So we have funds to actually uh, get uh, advice from extremely astute legal minds and we are doing that so that's happening the second thing is that um, you know I just want to make people happy that we are doing stuff and we're going ahead um, Maha Make Australia Healthy Again is all about health and so we've had this idea for a long time to have a, a multi-vendor store so that people can sell health products and services so that's available now and people can apply as vendors and that'll also stabilize the you know the financial side because we're, we're making it into a golden age industry where the vendors decide what they want to give us we don't make any and we make it free they can come on the, the website free um, we also feel that there's obvious problems with our gov governance systems. Um, they very old-fashioned and uh, don't, ir uh, in unresponsive. I was looking at the word unresponsive, and so we need to move this along. And we, we're trialling a prototype, which will be totally lawful of a gov governance system by the people for the people and so that project is going ahead as well um, it could be described as a grassroots meritocracy so the people uh, ask for things to happen and then you get a meritocracy which is people who've got skills uh, thinking about it you could almost say elders in the aboriginal uh, model who uh, you know come up with solutions and offer the solutions back to the people and then the people vote on what they want and and that system is actually used in Switzerland it's called CIR citizen initiated referendums and and that's what we feel you know the future holds if people wanted to visit your website the make Australia healthy again website can you give us the URL Sure, it's easy, make Australia healthy again dot org. Okay, thanks. So you are expanding that website now to include extra vendors or people who may feel, so to speak, they're on the same wavelength as you, pursuing the same types of knowledge and same interests? Well, the, th the thing is that, you know, there are many ways to make Australia healthy again, and, and one is to supply products and services. Um, so we're, we're making that available and, and it, it's very exciting and uh, just to go back if I may to the, to the governance it, that governing system works at every level you can have five people you can have 50, 100, 500 million whatever it, it works and, and we're going to make it uh, an open system open source system so we don't have the Dominion effect, where they go and switch the code and 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 you know get people who didn't have votes um, elected. 
and so it's, it's open for scrutiny, right? And, and it'll be a very, very beautiful system, easy for people to use. So um, these are positive things that are happening. Well, I think that's very important. You and I both know it's important for people to keep their chin up at a time like this. Mm -hmm. I think it is wearing people down. It has been quite a long time. Some people are coping better than others. We've got massively increased levels of alcohol consumption, for example, with people stuck at home, perhaps getting a bit bored. Also, unfortunately, there would seem to be increased levels of suicide across Australia and no doubt across the world because there would, in fact, be countries, nations that have been hit more hardly, affected worse than we have been, mm. or perhaps who are dealing with governments that have reacted or responded to the so-called pandemic in harsher ways than, than what's going on out here. It, it would be hard to imagine anyone reacting more strongly or harshly than what we've seen in Melbourne in recent times, which is where you are from. Well, I notice you haven't certainly been back there for some time. Mm. Can you give us your opinion on what's going on in Melbourne? We've heard it announced in the last few days. There has been a sixth, this is now the sixth lockdown mm. for people in Melbourne, which is making it a more affected place than perhaps anywhere across the entire nation. I think that's a good example of the ways in which people are starting to get worn down and perhaps even starting to arc up and wanting their voice heard. Do you think there's any hope for Melbourne in the short term? What do you think, as a native of Melbourne, not born there, but someone who resides there, what is your take on, on what's happening in Melbourne or what the future looks like for them? Well, it, it's going to be a while. I, I don't think it's going to be solved quickly unless that case in Alberta, Canada proves to be real 